Hello, my name is Lo, and I am currently incredibly frustrated with Unnatural Vegan. So, Unnatural Vegan made another video responding to the comments of her first video. And surprise, surprise, it was worse. First of all, sorry about the title. I had to make it kind of clickbaity because I don't have too many subscribers and I need to catch people's attention. To be clear, I personally am conflicted on the concept of canceling people, except in cases of like R. Kelly and other abusers. I think we definitely need to call people out and hold them accountable for what they say, but I think there's a delicate balance of allowing space for growth without giving too many unearned chances, and I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. Second of all, this response is going to be a little less comprehensive than my first response video, I didn't have the time, energy, or honestly desire to go through each of the points she makes and refute them all again when I basically already did that in my first response video. Instead, in this one, I want to talk more about the general ideas and arguments that come up repeatedly throughout this video. So let's jump right into this steaming hot pile of shit. Okay, so basically this video consists of her reading and responding to comments from her last video. In the intro, she says that she tried to take all the criticism seriously and really reflect on if or where she went wrong, but in the next breath she says she's not going to apologize and is just going to say the same things in more detail. So we can already kind of see that she's coming at this from a defensive and almost dismissive place. And that just gets more and more apparent as the video goes on. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The first theme that she brings up and continues to bring up throughout the video is her discomfort with the phrase silence is violence, which she sees as shaming white people for not speaking up. And already it is so apparent that she is centering herself in this discussion about the movement for black lives. The phrase silence is violence refers to the fact that when we live in an unequal society, just going about our business normally means that we are hurting people. To put it in more apparent terms and context, think about how slavery used to be normal and common and accepted among white Americans. While slaves were fighting for abolition, slave owners were remaining silent and just doing what was expected of them. And in doing so, they were causing unspeakable violence. Silence was violence then, and silence is violence now. And when someone asks you to stop being complicit and start helping them become free and equal, and your response is to complain that they're shaming you, honestly, what do you think that says about your priorities? At one point in the video, a natural vegan says something along the lines of, if you think people's silence as a personal attack, that's your problem. So in that same vein, I could say to her, if you think centering and uplifting black people is a personal attack, that's your problem. But I don't think that that actually advances this conversation. So how about we both agree to just leave that dismissive, that's your problem, attitude behind. Because there are people suffering and dying right now, and I think we should be focusing on that instead of focusing on our own hurt feelings. Another repeated theme, which she talked about in her first video as well, is that she doesn't like that advocates are demanding people drop everything to focus on Black Lives Matter, which I think is really telling. She makes a distinction in the beginning of the video between BLM as a specific movement and BLM as a statement, you know, just saying Black Lives Matter. And she says that while everyone should agree with the statement that Black Lives Matter, there are lots of valid reasons to disagree with the movement. But I think this shows that she's really missing the point. No one is demanding that you join every protest. No one is demanding that you donate money to all of these organizations. Everyone understands that, especially right now, there are plenty of reasons why someone might not be able to protest or donate. I mean, yeah, there was a big push for people to show support in these very tangible and effective ways, but pretty much every single leader and organization and publication has said that the most important part of the BLM movement is education and small but long-term changes. Some of the most impactful things white people can do is to understand our role in perpetuating racism and make a commitment to stop that. 
to change our own mindsets and start valuing black people more. So no, the Black Lives Matter movement isn't about stopping everything to fix racism for a couple of weeks. It's about recognizing and addressing racism in small but significant ways every day of our lives. As many commenters pointed out in her video, there were plenty of other YouTubers who did this by acknowledging the racism in their own fields and promoting some of the black members of their communities who might not always be as valued. That's what people mean when they say speak up. They don't mean stop caring about animal rights and pick up a BLM protest sign instead. They mean keep working to help black vegans feel safe and respected in the vegan community. I mentioned earlier that Unnatural Vegan says there are plenty of good reasons why a reasonable and compassionate person would not support Black Lives Matter, including not liking their methods, not agreeing with protesting during coronavirus, not wanting to defund the police, etc, etc. At first I was planning on responding to all of these points, but halfway through typing out that script I realized that I don't want this video to go on for hours. Plus, others have made much better and clearer and more concise arguments than I ever could, so I'll just leave some links in the description to videos you can check out. What I do want to focus on, though, is the fact that for white people like me and Unnatural Vegan, the BLM movement is a debate. We are able to make videos about why we do or don't agree with various points of the movement, and it's all very intellectual. And that is a privilege that we have because our lives are not at risk right now. But that focus on intellectual arguments is a common thread throughout this video and throughout Unnatural Vegan's entire channel. She talks a lot about being very logical and fact-based. To her, everything is debatable and provable with science. Everyone gets an equal opportunity to make their case and the person with the strongest case wins. But when the problem is that racism influences everything about the way we think and the way the world works, logic and evidence and colorblindness, favors white people. When eugenics was the hot new scientific craze, everyone from proto-Nazi Germany to America was pushing this logical and evidence-based conclusion that black people are inherently stupider and therefore don't deserve rights. And IQ testing has a ton of roots in racism. The white creators of many early IQ tests centered white experiences and knowledge because that's what they valued. So when non-white people who didn't know about baseball or hadn't learned trigonometry or didn't even speak English took the test, of course they got lower answers that validated the test creators' preconceived notions that people of color are less intelligent. So no, science and evidence isn't apolitical, especially in social science. Data is gathered and interpreted by humans who have pre-existing conceptions that end up influencing the results of the science and confirming the original pre-existing conceptions. When white people create the system, the system is going to favor white people. This is how white supremacy perpetuates itself. So white people are able to go through their life thinking that their perspectives are objective and their agendas are agendaless. And the only way to break through this is to listen to the people who are suffering as a result of this inequality. But throughout the video, Unnatural Vegan repeatedly condemns the idea of amplifying black voices. She frames it as, we can't think for ourselves. We have to mindlessly parrot black people. We have no free speech. Once again, this exemplifies how, during this movement that is explicitly and specifically about valuing black people, she is more focused on herself and her own opinions. Again, she sees black empowerment as an attack on her. In reality, when we say that we need to platform black voices, that is the necessary action to make things fair. For centuries, white Americans have created systems that only value white perspectives, from denying black people voting rights, to portraying black people as dumb in minstrel shows, to dismissing black people as thugs and welfare queens. Not only does this deny black people the ability to be heard, but it also denies them the ability to be taken seriously. We see this exact attitude come out when Unnatural Vegan continually claims that black people shouldn't necessarily take the lead in creating solutions, the same way that an oncologist doesn't need to have cancer in order to diagnose and treat it in others. Not only is this a completely nonsense analogy, seeing as cancer cells are physical things that can be tested for, while racism is a social construct that has to be understood on an intellectual and emotional level, 
But it's also incredibly infantilizing and invalidating to deny that black people's experiences with racism give them expertise on racism. A better analogy would have been a patient with severe endometriosis whose male doctor dismisses her pain and tells her that she's just being dramatic about her bad periods. On the other hand, a female doctor who has the medical knowledge and personal experience would be much more likely to take the patient seriously and correctly diagnose and treat the problem. Male doctors regularly treat women as unreliable witnesses to their own experiences, the same way that white experts do to black people. In philosophy terms, this is called an epistemic injustice, specifically a testimonial injustice. In everyday terms, this is called gaslighting. So no, if a male doctor is able to go through 10 years of medical training and still misdiagnose women because of a lack of respect for them, white experts shouldn't be trusted to fix social issues that only black people experience. Racism can't be fixed with logic. It's tied to our emotions and our sense of self, as Paula Ionide points out in The Emotional Politics of Racism. Only black people have enough personal experience and interpersonal respect to be able to diagnose and treat the social problem of racism. The last main theme that she brings up is a complete disregard of intersectionality. She absolutely dismisses the concept of white supremacist capitalist patriarchy without a thought, saying that it's conspiratorial nonsense. She also, without any evidence, might I add, says that it's ignorant to claim that anyone benefits from racial injustices like police violence, urban poverty, food deserts, etc. So my question for her is, why would these problems still exist if no one is benefiting from them? Why wouldn't we have fixed Flint's water system at any point in the last four years? Why wouldn't we have already invested in revitalizing urban communities? Why wouldn't we have already fixed the monstrous wealth gap instead of letting it widen? These issues continue being issues because fixing them isn't profitable for the people at the top. And that's not a conspiracy, that's just truth. All of history under capitalism is just workers and women and black people and queer people and disabled people and any other marginalized people being exploited and abused until they get fed up and start a riot. The Stonewall Riot is the reason why we have gay marriage and workplace protections now. The 1968 riots are what led to the Civil Rights Act. The Haymarket Riot is what gave us a 40-hour work week instead of a 100-hour work week. An unnatural vegan is right. Fixing these social problems would be beneficial for everyone. But our economic system isn't concerned with what is beneficial for everyone. It only cares about what is profitable for the few. Time and time again, we see that straight, white, upper class, able-bodied, cisgender men use their power and wealth to remain powerful and wealthy. So why is she so quick to dismiss naming that system? Why does she call social analysis extremist, infantile, absurd, anti-free speech? Why does she literally say she agrees with Ben Shapiro in his mocking perception of us? I think anybody who had a genuine interest in reflecting on their words and actions would have paused and really stopped to think about what it means that they're agreeing with Ben Shapiro and the alt-right. And I'm not saying that unnatural vegan is alt-right by any means, but I am saying that anyone who starts agreeing with alt-right and reactionary talking points should probably take a second and reflect on that. Innuendo Studios has a fantastic series called The Alt-Right Playbook, which discusses alt-right tropes, pipelines, and dog whistles that everyone should make themselves aware of to protect themselves against. I'll link it below. But beyond my concern for unnatural vegans' scarily reactionary responses, I'm also just pissed off. Almost all of the people responding to her are people who have been subscribed to her and supporting her for a long time and are trying to patiently educate her. And her response is to insult and dismiss and demean every comment and every perspective that is brought up to her. I doubt she's ever going to see this video, and even if she does, she's probably going to dismiss me along with everyone else. But on the tiny little chance that she ever does hear this, I just really want to know. Swayze, what is this for? 
There are comments and video responses by people who have been personally and profoundly hurt by your words. I have personally seen vegans in online forums using your arguments to make the community less welcoming to black people. And now you have used your platform with hundreds of thousands of subscribers to insult, infantilize, demean, and dismiss the very people who have been supporting and respecting you for years. Who is winning here? Not the vegan community, not the Black Lives Matter movement, not even you. So why keep digging the hole so much deeper? I'm going to put a link in the description to a video by the YouTuber Thought Slime in which he talks about the process of saying something hurtful in a video, getting called out for it, getting defensive, getting over his defensiveness, learning, apologizing, and promising to do better in the future. I think a lot of people, and not just unnatural vegan, could benefit from seeing an example of receiving and responding to criticism when you're in a position of power. I hope that Unnatural Vegan is able to listen and learn and change her mind about some of these issues. I know she's changed her mind about important things before, like how she went from raw vegan to not that. At the same time, since recording my last video, I've also become aware of some videos she released years ago in which she talks about why she's not intersectional and why she is ableist. If she hasn't changed her mind in the years since being called out for those videos, I'm really not going to hold my breath this time around. I did end up unsubscribing from her, especially after what she said in this last video about how she doesn't want a community of people who can't think for themselves or whatever. I just don't really have a desire to watch her videos anymore and I really don't want to keep helping her make money off of my subscription and views. If anyone else has unsubscribed and or is looking for new intersectional vegan voices to follow, I would definitely recommend checking out the black vegans I mentioned in the beginning of my last video. And I would also highly recommend watching the two videos that I have found by black YouTubers responding to unnatural vegans videos in which they give passionate and honest reactions and points talking about the actual effect that she is having and why what she is saying is so negative. Lastly, I would also recommend Mexi and A Privileged Vegan, two amazing and progressive YouTubers who frequently talk about the deeper social and political structures surrounding veganism. I do just want to say, I mean this is kind of hypocritical because I've already made two response videos at this point, but I honestly don't think it's worth responding to her anymore and the more people keep talking about these issues the more engagement she's gonna get and the more reason she's gonna have to just continue this controversy if she can get engagement and money out of it you know i would like to think that she's not that shallow that she's gonna make videos just for the clicks but we never know and when there is monetary motivation for doing stuff like that we never know and lastly before i sign off i just want to say if you are somebody who has watched unnatural vegans videos and you are feeling less safe in the vegan community now as a result of that please 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 know that first of all your pain is so incredibly valid it is so understandable I mean, I'm angry enough as it is, so I can't even imagine how much hurt and anger you must be feeling. But second, please just know that in the comments section of both of Unnatural Vegan's videos, there were literally thousands of people responding and saying all of the reasons why she is wrong. And there are so many people who want to make this community safer and more welcoming and more inclusive. And, you know, it's easy to get discouraged to everyone at this point. It's easy to get discouraged when we have loud voices saying such hurtful things, but please just know that there are a lot of people who care and who want to make it better. I think I'm gonna go drink some tea and hang out with my roommates because I need to calm down now.